is securing GraphQL APIs harder than securing regular REST APIs? In this video, we'll be exploring how to use field policies with Stepsan to create attribute-based access control. And we also will be using JWT to handle these permissions. So let's head over to a new VS Code project where we'll be starting the import of an existing GraphQL API, in this case, the SpaceX GraphQL API. So to import this, we just need to run the command steps and import GraphQL, and then provide the endpoint of this GraphQL API. The CLI will then ask us how we'd like to name this new endpoint, and I typically go for something simple, like the, the name of this directory. But it also provides you with a name that you can use instead. Type here, API slash easy field policies, and then it will take a couple of seconds to import the SpaceX GraphQL API and to generate the GraphQL schema. As you can see, it has uh, types in here, but it also has a list of queries. An example, a query to get all the launches. And to start this GraphQL API, we will be running steps and start. This will deploy two endpoints. One endpoint that has a localhost graphical, which today we cannot use because we need to use the deployed endpoint as we will be using different types of tokens to make sure that we can access the attribute-based control that we're going to be setting up using the field policies. So we'll be taking this second URL, which is also the URL you would be using if you start building a production uh, project with Stepsan. And then I would go to an example Postman in which I can use this to query the GraphQL API. I need to provide my Stepsan API key, which is right here. Stepsan API key, which is right here. And then also I need to set the body, in which I can start typing GraphQL queries. We thought it was a query to use launches. And as you see, Postman has the same auto completion that you would see in GraphQL because it's using introspection to get the GraphQL schema. You can see here on this tiny button say schema fetched. And we could just ask for the ID, example, the details, uh, and maybe also the launch site. It's kind of cool because I was actually visiting a launch site of SpaceX last summer in Florida. Let me see, maybe we'll find this same launch site in the results of this query later on. And then ask for the name of the launch site. So I can query this, and then it will return to me a list of launches done by SpaceX, including its ID, uh, some details, and also the name of the launch site. And as you can see, it's quite an extensive list. Uh, if we go back to the GraphQL API, we can make some changes here to make this available without an API key. So the step for that will be to create a new config.jml file. YAML. We actually need to create this at the top level. And then here we need to start typing our access-based um, Field controls. Let me copy this over from a different screen. Paste and go back here. So in here I have, first I have a field called deployment, which I won't be going into depth right now. It's something we'll be using in the next step. First, let's see at our policies. And here we can say, we need to set our type policies to query and then condition to true, meaning that by default, all the queries will be available without providing a token. This can be your steps and API key. It can also be a JWT that we set up to work with whatever is in here. But first, let's look at this. So let's say the policy default is true. And this means that you can access all queries without providing a token or API key. So let me run this query again. Uh, so now it has the API key from steps in, as you can see. So let me run it again by deleting the API key and then see if we still get some results. And as you can see, the results are still there. If then we would be heading back and change this to false in example, it means that by default, all queries don't return any data unless you provide a valid token or API key. If I now rerun this query, I'll be getting a message that I'm unauthorized. So I can provide an API key. And this API key will then uh, make sure that I will be able to get the data. But this is how it works with API keys. In the beginning, I already told you, we can also use JWT. JWT, in case you don't know, it is helping you to uh, do authentication for most APIs. 
And there is a cool website called jwt.io, which helps you to encode and decode JWTs. And we can use this encoding to say, um, we're gonna make a JWT token. We're gonna be using the HS256 encryption. Uh, and we're also gonna be providing a payload. And it has a name, it has an ID, and it also has the creation date. And then you can see it also has roles. And the roles are already in here because I'm gonna be doing something special with these roles later on. So for now, you can just ignore them. And then to verify the signature, we're actually gonna be using a secret that is inside our config.jam. Because first I told you not to look at this thing. So actually start looking at it again. You can see here we are gonna be setting the keys. We're gonna be using the algorithm, the HS256 that we saw on the JWT.io website. And then we have a key called development only. This is of course to specify, you should be using this for development only because probably you have your own authentication provider that's providing you with all these things that you can then insert inside this config.jaml file. I'm copying this, I go back to the JWT website and I paste this thing here. So now that's my key, it's telling me it's a weak secret. It's completely fine because I said it is development only. Let me copy this and then go back to uh, this thingy here. As you saw, it doesn't work if I don't provide an API key. What I can provide is a JWT. I'm pasting it right in here. And of course, and it is a JWT, you need to provide uh, the bearer because it always asks for the prefix bearer. Now you can see it's still unauthorized because I probably need to make a small change here. But as it doesn't look, it doesn't look for this condition, but instead it looks for the existence of a JWT like this. Back, I should now be able to send a request and then get the data if I provide a valid JWT. And now you can see my data is there again. So instead of using the steps and API key, I can now use a JWT instead. And my steps and API key should actually still be working because it overrides all the um, field policies you would set in here. So now we'd still get my data, but of course you probably don't want to share your steps and API key with anyone using your API because you want your API to be uh, secure and not uh, leaking, potentially leaking your steps and API key. So if I would send this with JWT, it will work. So this is just a basic setup for all queries, but I probably want to override this by making it special for uh, a set of uh, queries that I would define myself. So we've been using the launches query before. Uh, so let's try and see if we can extend that by creating a rules inside our policies. Here we have our type queries, and then within the type we would be setting rules. Is in here. So these is our these are our rules that we call launch related. Um, and then it is the condition that it should have the role launch viewer. Prettier. And we apply this to all the different launches. Right now. Let me actually change this JWT. Um, actually, let's leave it in and first go to Postman. We should now still be able to view these launches uh, because of course we already set the rule in there. So let me actually change the rule now here. So let me get rid of this rule and make sure that this JWT no longer has the rule um, as the field permissions to view uh, these launches. Copy this, go back here in Postman and provide a different JWT. If I would press send, I no longer have the information because the role um, to get the to be a launch viewer has been deleted from a JWT. Back, use the previous token. I would again be able to get uh, these queries, and then with my changed query, I'm only impossible to. It's only impossible for me to access all the queries that are launch related. So if I'd be going to my body. Uh, so this is no longer available for me. Refetch the schema. 
It should, should it even be showing up. As you can see, the launches is no longer there. So what I could access is all the other fields, an example like histories. Try this one. Maybe get an ID. Maybe there's some sort of name in there or details. So these are all the past uh, launches. And actually all the past other things that SpaceX has done. So I can access this information because I don't have any field permission set uh, for this query. We're going back. You can see we only set it for launch related queries like launches, past launches, uh, upcoming launches. Uh, and also we set a field level uh, for all the queries that all the queries would require you to have a JWT. And then as more you can play with, we have a whole repo filled with these examples. If we're going to the stipsend dash um, steps and dash dev GitHub repo, you can find the snippet one, and inside there there's something called protection, which is information for you how to set up any field level uh, permissions in Stepsend. And as I told you in the beginning, you can do this for APIs that you build with Stepsend. You can also do this for APIs that you want to expose through Stepsend, so you can add this and enhance security for these APIs. And of course, instead of using a step send to decode JWTs for you, you can use your own authentication server. If you like this video, make sure to press the like button below and also subscribe to our channel to be updated whenever we launch a new video.